Hi, and welcome to the Oikos Family Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 4 of the Abundant Life Series. I'm Sonia Wood, and in today's podcast, I'm going to share with you Part 3 of the Abundant Life audiobook, which I did. And this is a 22-minute section out of the book. So you know what? I'm not actually going to have much to say about it because rather listen to those 22 minutes if possible because it's all about the first steps to abundant life. And there's quite a bit covered in that, as you can guess, because it's 22 minutes long. So I just want to thank you for stopping by and for listening to this podcast and for joining me. Bye for now. And here is part three of First Steps to Abundant Life. Part 3. First Steps to Abundant Health After we had rejected the suggestion of surgery and removal of the colon and choosing rather to wait on God and trust His guidance for the next step, God sent us an incredible gift of a woman by the name of Linda. She arrived to collect her home education resources from Oikos Family Ministries. Greg told Linda that I was unwell and hemorrhaging and had refused surgery for colon cancer. Linda asked if she may visit me in my room, which she did. Linda came into my room, went down on her knees next to my bed, and laid her arms across my body and prayed, with the tears streaming down her cheeks. She then informed me that she was a colon specialist, and that she would stand by me and support me on this journey of not going to hospital for surgery and chemo, as she fully believed in a natural approach to healing. She did, however, warn us that we would have to make serious, dramatic changes to our lives if we were truly going to be committed to learn a new way, the natural way to healing. Thus began the most incredible journey of learning about new ways in approaching health. While studying the Word, we read about Daniel and his friends and how they chose to eat the way God had instructed them and how full of health and vitality they were. We began to feel convicted that God wants us to stand out as beacons, full of such good health that we would be noticed amongst the people as those who not only follow God, but they look different in every way, shining for Him, not just the way we talk and think and love others, but also that our bodies will be temples of purity, goodness, vitality and health for Him to do His work through. In Daniel 1, verses 8 to 20, we read, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and sympathy to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I'm afraid of my lord the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the God whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of other young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the other young men who ate the royal food. So the God took away their choice food and wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them in, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hanaya, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. We learned about cleaning our bodies, detoxing, ridding ourselves of the many toxins which we take in due to the westernized way in which we live. We discovered how extremely necessary and important this cleansing is to God. 
So began a new way of doing our best to apply everything he was teaching us. I was finally paying attention with help from him, his word, Linda, and the support of the whole family. We as a family embarked on a very serious cleansing program. We began in our pantry, moved from there into the general home, and slowly, one step at a time, we moved in a direction which we were excited about and absolutely certain that God was pleased about. The first step which Linda suggested for the healing of colon cancer was that I go on a liquid-only fast so as to give my colon a rest from having to pass food through and digest. I drank mugs of hot water with a teaspoon of honey and the juice of one lemon. This became our survival fluid. I was also taking supplements and herbal detox drops, powders and capsules. I will not go into the details of what each of these were because each individual would take the herbal therapy necessary for their specific condition. All my herbal therapies were focused on cleaning and healing of the colon. The rectal tumour resulted in a severely prolapsed rectum. So as well as tumours in the colon, I was also suffering now with rectal cancer. After a few days of being on a liquid-only intake, the bleeding stopped, so I was then out of immediate danger. The doctors had warned Greg that if he did not bring me to the hospital for surgery to stop the bleeding and remove the tumours in the colon, my life expectancy was very short. Weeks, or maybe even only days. Our natural approach to healing cancer the natural way was not a simple journey. It was a long and slow recovery to full health. I share this hesitantly because each individual's body is unique and so each one heals differently in a different time. For me, however, my body had been neglected for so very long. So now that I was finally paying attention and giving it what it needed, it was not going to suddenly repair overnight or even over weeks, but rather months and in fact for me it was two years in total. I only share this here so as to give you a big picture as to the incredible greatness of the miracle and all that God taught us on this two-year journey to abundant health. During these two years, I went from being critically ill, bedridden for months, then to a wheelchair, then finally managing to walk slowly and sit sideways, and last of all, I was able to walk up banks and steps. For some reason, I think mostly due to the prolapse rectum, I was unable to manage stairs for a very long time. The level of illness and pain during this time varied from so extreme that I was barely managing from one morphine dose to the next, until eventually, instead of weeks of continual pain and illness, I would have ten bad days and then two better days, then seven bad days and three good days, and so this continued until in his time my general health slowly began to improve. After the months of continued pain and tumours growing by the day, during which time I definitely wanted to give up or run to the hospital, I finally saw results of the tumours reducing in size and my pain levels becoming more manageable. My flesh often wanted to give in, but my spirit was strong because all the way through this journey he gave me promises to hang on to which became my hope. One such promise, which I recall now, is this. Boundless is my love for thee, boundless then your trust should be. I want to share here a little about hope. The world, man, specialists, gave me no hope, no message at all of hope, to the point where I actually believed that lie, especially when I heard, shame, there's no hope for her, her cancer is so advanced, she's not going to survive it, the doctors have said she is terminal. But, my God said, Psalm 42 verse 5. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Psalm 62 verses 5 to 6. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Psalm 147 verse 11. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Proverbs 13 verse 12. 
Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Isaiah 40 verse 31 But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You see, I chose to believe that these words were his promises to me. I chose to believe that I would run and not grow weary, even though I lay in a bed of such suffering, unable to even get myself to the bathroom. I had to be carried there and back. But I believed in my whole heart, soul, mind and strength that I would run and I would soar and I would not faint and that I would be like a new plant in a spring garden and like a tree with life. I could believe all of this because for me, my hope was him. So even if I did not survive the cancer and it destroyed my life to the point of death, I would be with him eternally anyway, where I would do all of what he had promised me. Be it here on earth or with him in heaven. Either way, I would hope and rejoice. I had nothing to lose by believing and hoping. Romans 12.12 Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. You see, he told me to be joyful, even though I was sorely afflicted. I could be joyful because of the hope he gave me, because of my hope in him. This, however, did not diminish the suffering, but it did cause me to be patient in the struggle and faithful in prayer. This very hope became my anchor, I shall always remember and be grateful for what he taught me about hope during my affliction. Hebrews 6 verse 19 We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. 1 John chapter 3 verse 3 Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. What a gift that the very hope he asks us to have. When we have it, when we choose to hope, We discover that in that he purifies us, because he is our hope. He is pure. Family and friends also hoped with me. My hope was increased through their example of unfailing love and hope for me. Linda never once indicated that she did not have hope for me, as she continued to teach us how to take care of our bodies with natural remedies. She was not only teaching us how to get our bodies pure, but she also cleaned out our pantry and our home of all foods with additives and harmful chemicals, as well as processed foods, and so on, so as to start us on a clean slate of a natural and pure only lifestyle. This clean out and clean up was a major adjustment to our family, but a very worthwhile one. We did, however, suggest to people that they take one step at a time in adjusting their lifestyle to be more natural, because we have discovered that when people go too radical, too quickly, the enthusiasm dies rather quickly, and they revert back to their previous bad habits. Hence we suggest that one step be taken and mastered into forming a good habit before moving on to the next step. An example of this would be removing sugar from the diet, such as in tea and cereals. Just use honey. Honey has many healing properties, while sugar suppresses the immune system and causes many other bad imbalances in the body. Once a family is using honey in place of sugar, and they have that one step mastered, then move on to the next and slowly get the bad out and the good in, so that it becomes a natural lifestyle, not a forced one. In our situation, we had to be radical and make immediate and urgent changes because we were dealing with a life and death situation. Greg chose to have the whole family on this radical journey and not just mom. His idea was that if his wife had to take on these new ways to survive, then the whole family should as well, to support her, and also so that all of us would benefit from it. It was because of this decision which Greg made that our eyes began to be opened to the incredible value of these changes to both Missy and James's lives. After my health had begun to improve to the point where I was no longer critical, and I was definitely on the road to wellness, then we seriously began to pay closer attention to the changes we could make for our children's health to also benefit. Thus began the first steps to their changed lives. 
Although I know what a huge miracle it is that I survived such advanced cancer, I still consider it a great miracle to see both my children walk in such wellness today. To watch Missy every day blooming so beautifully, to have energy she never knew before, looking so vibrant and beautiful, it is just beyond description. From 16 years of facing such extreme health challenges on a daily basis to such abundant health as a gift beyond what any words on the page can describe. All this because we paid closer attention to God's instruction to us on how He designed and purposed our bodies to function for His glory. How do I express the depth of my appreciation for all that He has taught us during those years? One way in which I feel I can somehow say thank you is in writing this book. I can only hope that it helps others to discover the value of changing lifestyles to enable us to be the vessels he's created, ones which are made in his image. The next part in this book is support systems. I introduced that part now by inserting some sharing written by a friend, Teresa, who interceded for me through my struggle with cancer. Teresa called me while I was in the midst of finally writing this book to tell me that while she was washing dishes, she suddenly had a strong impression that she should go and write down her experience of walking with me through cancer. She had no idea that I had begun to put pen to paper, so I asked her to send to me whatever she felt to write, and I would include it. You will read at the end of the support systems a very similar story to this of when Linda called me to read from her journal to me. Both calls been so very timely, we all agreed that it was his directing, especially considering that years have since passed when all the struggle with cancer actually took place, as you will read from the following sharing from Teresa. Walking in Prayer and Intercession by Teresa Dennis My experience since 1985 of people close to me with life-threatening illnesses has made me acutely aware of what they looked like and how they spoke. And although I lived in Cape Town, The Lord had ensured that I saw Sonia at least three times a year since 2001. And as time went on, I watched my friend's health deteriorate. I sensed she was sick, and so when in 2004 she told me she had bowel cancer, I was not completely surprised. Greg and Sonia asked us to support them in their God-directed decision to go the health route in fighting the cancer. I knew without a doubt that this directing was from God, and I knew that the Lord was leading me to support them in intercession to stay on this path. During 2004, I saw Sonia in April, again at an Oikos Moms retreat in September, and by the time she arrived at our home in November for a ministry tour, she was extremely ill. The Lord had directed me many times during the previous six months to pray for Sonia immediately as it is urgent. When I phoned to ask what was happening, either Greg or Sonia would say that things had been so bad that they had been tempted to seek medical help, but had managed to come through the crisis. While in our home in the November, Sonia experienced an extreme pain crisis during which we were sure she had gone to be with the Lord, but by His grace, and as we interceded, she came through. In February 2005, the cancer increased its onslaught, and Sonia was extremely ill. We prayed and continued to believe God for healing and for the continuing with the health route. You may ask me what I prayed. The answer is simple. I prayed in the Spirit all the time, also praying Scripture, as only Jesus knew what I needed to pray. Every time I spoke to Sonia over the phone, I knew her level of pain by hearing her voice. There were times when the Lord would wake me in the middle of the night and ask me to pray now. It was as if when Sonia's pain barometer increased, the Lord impressed on me to pray more. I did not always phone the next day to see how things were, as I now knew that the Lord would faithfully prompt me to pray whenever needed. But I would always try to send an email with scripture or encouraging words. June through August 2005 were the most intense months of my intercessory walk with Sonia. For one year now, I had deep faith that she would be healed and that the health route was the best path to follow. I remember thinking, when Sonia is healed, it is only going to be because God is sovereign. The route she has taken is the right route, but it isn't the route that will ultimately heal her. Only God can do that. She has just been a good steward of the temple in attending to the health of the temple. 
Later, God revealed to me that the reason I had faith had nothing to do with me or anything else, but because of the fact that Christ lived in me, and the life which I now lived in the flesh, I lived by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Christ's faith was in me, and I could just believe. During the July holidays of 2005, Sonia phoned me from Oslo Beach, where they were staying as she went through the most severe stage of her illness. Her body was fighting for life. I could hear that she was very ill, and she said it would be so good if I could be there with her. All I wanted to do was put our three children in the car and drive from Cape Town. But the Lord wouldn't let me. I was devastated and couldn't understand why. However, a few months later, the Lord revealed to me that by not being part of the everyday management of Sonia's illness, I was better able to apply myself in intercession for her and her family. This was hard for me, but the Lord reminded me that he had told me in 2001 that I would walk as an intercessor for the Wood family's health needs. It was also during this time that Sonia phoned me one night to say goodbye. I could barely hear her over the phone but she told me that she was sure that she would not be on this earth for much longer and that she wanted to say goodbye to me before she was unable to do so. I assured her that I loved her and that I would continue to pray for her and trust God for his sovereignty in the situation. However, when I put the phone down, I was devastated. I wept deeply. I spent time begging God to please not take my friend. Eventually, after much wrestling, I handed my will over to the Lord and released my friend to him. I continued to pray and pray and pray, but this time for his will to be done, as it is in heaven, as I did not know his way nor his thoughts. I do not have words to express the joy and gratitude I felt as the last few months of 2005 rolled by and my dear friend's health started to slowly improve. It was wonderful to see her in January 2006 at the Pillamom's retreat, a lot better and then again in October of 2006, looking so much healthier, when she travelled to Cape Town to minister in Franschhoek. The Oikos Pillar Retreat in February 2007 was amazing, in that I saw my friend healthier than I had ever seen her. She was glowing with health, able to walk long distances, dance and praise and worship, and was able to sit down on the couch next to me without any pain. I saw abundant health. I felt joy unspeakable. I know that the journey from 2001 was God-ordained, purposed and planned as part of my walk with the Lord. The intense times of intercession were times when I learned to rely on God and trust His voice as He led me to pray for Sonia. I also know that to stand by someone and to support their decision on treatments is vital, if not ultimately what helps him to stand too. So if the Lord has called you to walk closely with a family member or friend through illness, Know that your greatest place of support is in the Lord. Run into his high tower when you are feeling depleted and he will give you rest and restore you so that you can continue this vital Aaron ministry of intercession and support of your loved one through illness. Proverbs 18 verse 10 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe.